Dear Chairman, dear colleagues, this is Christian Up from Hanover Medical School. Thank you for inviting me to talk about hemodynamic monitoring during mechanical circulatory support in cardiogenic shock. These are my disclosures. In cardiogenic shock, we are in a rather unique situation as compared to septic shock, for example, where we need to protect the acutely diseased heart as well as all other end organs at the same time, which has lots of implications for medical therapy, but also for mechanical circulatory support strategies and monitoring. This is nicely ref reflected by a rather old study from 1988 in sheep, so in a large animal models, the authors had a control group on the left and an acute myocardial infarction model on the right where the LAD was ligated. And you can immediately see that depending on the ECMO flow in the left graph, the systolic wall stress and diastolic pressure and also volumes are decreasing depending on ECMO flow. In contrast to the acutely diseased heart, which uh, differently, differently responds to ECMO flow, so end diastolic pressure and systolic wall stress increase with higher ECMO flows. Uh, that tells us that the acutely diseased heart uh, completely differently responds to mechanical circulatory support strategies, which needs to be taken into account when applying this therapy to patients with cardiogenic shock from, for example, acute myocardial infarction or acute on chronic decompensated heart failure. Uh, a major complication of uh, via ECMO for support, for example, is left ventricular stasis and thrombosis, which needs to um, uh, be um, um, investigated and monitored. So by applying a sophisticated hemodynamic monitoring, we uh, are um, able to early detect uh, reduced flow uh, through the uh, pulmonary uh, arterial bed. So use of uh, hemodynamic monitoring is absolutely essential in, in addition to echo uh, to uh, monitor for changes um, in the body um, introduced by mechanical circulatory support. Of course, you need to monitor lots of different things, metabolics, um, you need to do echo, um, the coagulation system, and so on. Um, we do, for example, echo every eight hours in patients. Um, and after moving the patient to be sure uh, where are the cannulas, for example, if you use an impeller pump, uh, is the position correct, um, how are the chambers behaving, and so on. Uh, but it's uh, essential in the end uh, to apply sophisticated hemodynamic monitoring in those patients to measure the pressures and flows in those patients. This is um, nicely reflected by um, this uh, manuscript from 2015 from uh, Dan Berkhoff and colleagues where the authors demonstrated that depending on the uh, flow in this um, um, example by an impeller device, uh, um, ventricular vascular uncoupling occurs. So the aortic pulse wave uh, is dampened. Uh, and that tells us that um, pulse contour analysis, for example, by the PICOS system uh, is not reliable in those complex patients um, to uh, estimate hemodynamic changes um, introduced by MCS and the underlying condition. So we recommend to perform a complete baseline, a check-in on the ICU, uh, maybe already in the cath lab. And um, this, of course, comprises an echo and uh, full labs and so on. But uh, we um, put lots of emphasis on um, hemodynamics, invasive hemodynamics, by a PA catheter. And with catheter, you can measure uh, directly pressures and flows. For example, the central venous pressure, the mean arterial um, pressure uh, is measured by um, arterial lines. Um, with this one guns, you can in addition measure the mean pulmonary arterial pressure, the pulmonary capillary vet pressure, and also cardiac output or cardiac index. But you need to uh, take into account that patients on VA ECMO, depending on the venous cannula position, uh, thermal dilution might not be uh, as reliable as compared to patients, for example, with an impeller pump or uh, other devices um, not introducing uh, an extracorporeal um, shunt in those patients. And you can calculate uh, several different um, parameters from those directly uh, measured values, for example, the pulmonary arterial uh, 
fertility index, cardiac power output, and pulmonary and systemic vascular resistance, uh, maybe also indexes. And um, those are very important uh, values for monitoring and guiding therapy in your patient. Um, the CPOs already, uh, already a traditional marker and calculated by miniature pressure times cardiac output divided by 451 and already 16 years back in the shock trial, the authors uh, demonstrated that uh, reduction in cardiac power output is directly associated with an increase in in-hospital mortality. And you can uh, further sharpen this image by adding the number of used inotropes and uh, the levels, uh, systemic lactate levels in your patient. And here uh, in um, nice works from uh, Detroit, the National Cardiogenic Shock Initiative, uh, um, the authors demonstrated that in patients on low cardiac power output, high use of inotropes, different inotropes, and high lactate levels, survival is strongly decreased uh, in those patients with acute myocardial infarction related cardiogenic shock. Another important parameter is the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and the central venous pressure. So uh, the uh, pressures measured uh, indicating left at atrial and right atrial pressures um, as a surrogate of preload for uh, the left and the right ventricle, uh, which is modifiable by um, mechanical structure support settings, by uh, volume management, and also uh, by different drugs. Another important parameter is the PAPI, so pulmonary arterial pulsatility index. This is easily calculated by dividing the pulse pressure, so systolic uh, pulmonary arterial pressure minus the diastolic pressure divided by the central venous pressure. And for example, in patients with low pulmonary uh, arterial pulsatility and high central venous pressure, uh, this indicates um, severe right ventricular failure, either acute or chronic in those patients, which um, then helps you uh, for decision-making in MCS in those patients. So even if a treatment goals, of course, should be individualized, and this depends on the device used, on uh, the, the patient itself, comorbidities, and the underlying condition, uh, of course, you can uh, tell some rough rules uh, for guiding therapy in those patients, depending on measurements of the pulmonary artery catheter. For example, you should maintain a mean arterial pressure of 70 or above, and you should control the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure which should be below 20 or even lower. Um, you should maintain the central venous pressure between 10 and 15 millimeters mercury, so not too low, but uh, of course not too high, and keep the puppy and the CPO above two and open height respectively. Um, of course, depending on uh, the disease state and the MCS device used. This is also associated with um, outcomes in those patients, and it's not just measuring numbers. Uh, here from um, a study again from Detroit uh, from two, 2013 in patients with acute myocardial infarction, cardiogenic shock, where the Impeller 2.5 device was used, and um, use of this device was immediately associated with an increase in mean arterial pressure, um, lowering of the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure from uh, 32 to 19 millimeters mercury, and an increase in cardiac power output, which was then uh, immediately associated with uh, a strongly increased survival in those patients. And this was confirmed in another analysis uh, from the National Cardiogenic Shock Initiative, uh, where the authors uh, analyzed more than 15,000 patients uh, with AMI-related cardiogenic shock supported with an impeller. And uh, use of the PA catheter was, in this context, uh, independently associated with increased survival um, in those patients. But it's not only important for adjusting your device settings, for example, or medical therapy. It's also important for the whole strategy. For example, in patients with acute myocardial infarction and impeller CP support, do I need an additional VA ECMO? So do I need to upgrade to ECMELA? Do I need um, a stronger impeller pump? Do I need right ventricular support? And of course, measurements with a pulmonary artery catheter can help you uh, for decision making in this setting. So a high capillary wedge pressure on support, a high central venous pressure, um, and a low uh, pulmonary arterial 
positivity indicating RV failure on the impeller, for example, a low puppy, a low CPO. Those are all indicators which are not self-standing, but help you to um, make wise decisions uh, for patients on support. So in summary, in patients with cardiogenic shock, pulmonary artery catheters provide direct measurements of pressures, are especially advantages for identifying, ident identifying RV failure are independent from the arterial pulse rate, which is a, a strong advantage uh, compared to other uh, hemodynamic monitoring systems. Reflect hemodynamics across the whole spectrum of shock, so from pre-shock stage A, for example, until D and E. Invasive uh, hemodynamics using PA catheters uh, essentially guide clinical management before MCS, during, and early after MCS, so in this very vulnerable phase of weaning and recovery. Thank you.